Hello everyone, this is Bonnie Harvey. I'm making this video to help us understand a little bit more about what's happening in the world. Um, and I thought about calling it what in the world and then I thought well you know it's more than the world and I thought about naming it what in the universe but the universe is a little bit large so I think I will name this what in the solar system. Uh, some of this is uh, the the compilation of an interview from 09 or 10 that was broadcast on the Watchman's Cry, which is an interview of two um, astrophysicists that were hired by the military. The ideas in here are echoed by Dr. James McCanny, astrophysicist, and you can Google, you can search for his YouTube videos. Uh, he has a lot of them, and he will fill in the cracks uh, and and help you learn what is happening. There are incoming bodies. This was discovered uh, during the 1990s during a period of lesser solar uh, activity when the military satellites were being affected. Uh, they thought it was the enemy doing this, so they asked the enemy, and the enemy said, well, no, same thing is happening to us. We thought it was you guys. So then they hired the experts to figure out what was going on. The bottom line is there are incoming uh, planetary uh, and also uh, stellar bodies, uh, and the bottom line is hang on for a wild ride. Do world leaders know this? Yes, they do. That's why the Almighty, who knew the end at the beginning, uh, wrote, uh, saw them hiding in rocks and caves and 20 stories down in their luxury condos. But uh, still, the Almighty calls it, you're hiding in caves, you cannot get away from me. There have been changes in the outer solar system. Pluto and Neptune have already experienced polar shifts. Jupiter has had its atmosphere doubled. Mercury has a new magnetic field that it never had seven years ago. Our sun is being destabilized. A per, uh, an effect of a destabilized sun occurred in 2005 when the largest ever solar explosion recorded occurred uh, the equivalent of 52 billion atom bombs and it ejected protons at almost the speed of light. These, This radiation hit us 30 minutes later. Usually it's 48 hours but this hit us 30 minutes. There was some damage, but it wasn't a direct hit, so we were spared. The incoming bodies are giving off huge amounts of radiation, electromagnetic, gamma, ultraviolet, x-ray, every kind of radiation imaginable, also in exerting incredible gravitational pull on the outer planets, which is how it was discovered. Uh, an astronomer noticed in 91 that, uh, that our outer planets were being pulled out of their orbits. He predicted that a large body uh, was approaching from the south. These, the radiation from these bodies uh, is being absorbed through our poles. Here we see a diagram of the radiation coming from the sun and we see how our magnetosphere uh, which is like a donut that wraps around us and we're the center of the donut and our north and south poles are exposed. We can see generally we are pre we are protected from radiation but not from the north and south especially if there are incoming bodies from the southern hemisphere. We are sitting directly uh, in the path of danger. The heliosphere is uh, also being affected. The heliosphere is the uh, bubble uh, that is around our sun to protect it from inc incredible interstellar winds. It also protects the earth from radiation as does our magnetosphere, the donut that's around us. Uh, and this was the 25 percent depleted over this 10-year period. Both the heliosphere and the magnetosphere that were put in place by the Creator at the beginning to protect the Earth from radiation are being corrupted, depleted, destroyed. A third layer of protection is ozone, which protects us from harmful UBV radiation. 
If we get too much UVB, we get skin cancer, cataracts, a, a suppressed immune system, and an attack on all manner of plant life, from fish to plants to single cells to humans. Here's a schematic of how UV, UVB is, is uh, filtered out by the ozone layer. If the ozone layer is gone, that protection is gone. Here is a diagram of the corruption of the ozone layer in the southern, in the South Pole. This is Antarctica. We see the um, scale at the bottom. The more blue this hole is, the less ozone there is. Take a minute afterwards, maybe to come back to this slide and study that a bit. And this ended in 1999. Well, that was. 14 years ago, so I, I shudder to think what it is now. Here's a schematic of what is actually happening in the South Pole as this incoming body actually punches a hole with radiation through the ozone layer. And that asks, how long have we known this? Uh, John Maynard explains. John Maynard has worked for, for a variety of uh, highly placed governmental positions. He said he worked when he worked for intelligence. Many articles uh, concerning space and extraterrestrial space threats crossed his desk. He said that in 1983 NASA's Iris infrared satellite, infrared, infrared telescopes see electromagnetic radiation. They see what our eye cannot see. That's why this thing was incoming uh, we'll, we'll find out later, incoming for about 40 years at this point, and nobody had seen it. But via this infrared telescope, data started pouring in, showing an anomaly from the south. And here is a newspaper article in uh, the Washington Post uh, announcing this huge body. And I'll go to the second column over here and read this to you. The most fascinating explanation of this mystery body which is so cold it casts no light and has never been seen by optical telescopes on Earth or in space, is that it is a giant gaseous planet as large as Jupiter. So uh, you know, that was what they thought in 83, but the, but the bottom line is you can't see this thing. We can't see it. Only infrared telescopes can see it which was bad news since because it was coming from the south because the best observatories were in the northern hemisphere. Thus began a concerted effort to build telescopes in the South Pole. Uh, they collected the first one, South Pole Telescope, collected images in 07 and it does not tend to take conventional images. Interestingly enough, it photographs electromagnetic images. This is exactly the kind of telescope that would be needed to detect these invisible, this invisible body in the southern that's coming at us from our southern, our south pole. Here is a picture of the station. It's not a small station. It is manned 24/7, uh, uh, 365. Uh, teams rotate in and out. You can see that there's a lot of interest down there. Uh, also, uh, some telescopes were built in Australia. This continues to this day. Uh, there are 2,500 servicemen came to Australia in 2012. Six months later, this farm of telescopes was open for business. Uh, is there any link here? Uh, did they come to protect the telescopes or to operate them? I don't know. Uh, in the first 10 years after this body was discovered, press coverage was very honest, and it was commonly reported in uh, the mainstream press. In 1991, an astronomer was taking pictures in Australia, and he submitted an abstract for publication, sent photos to DC to be blinked, which is to be superimposed in order to detect, detect even, even the most, the, even the smallest movement However, uh, the photos never arrived, and Dr. Harrington died shortly thereafter. The same uh, fate befell Jean Schumacher of uh, Comet Schumacher-Levy fame, the comet that hit Jupiter, uh, also suffered an untimely death in Australia after photographing the southern hemisphere, and his telescope and data burned to the ground. After this, there was a change in the to tone of the press, and it started to more debunk and deny the story. Here's a picture of the Earth. We can see the core, 
the mantle, and then the thin crust that's on the outside. What happens to this? Well, the core absorbs radiation through our poles. It heats the core up. A heated core produces expansion that seeks release. This pressure uh, pushes the mantle. The mantle causes crust layer disturbances. We just finished a month that had 20 major earthquakes. We're seeing long extinct volcanoes suddenly coming back to life. This is because of the radiation that's being absorbed through our core. <clears throat> the astrophysicists were uh, asked regarding our future. They said they expect the collapse of our magnetosphere and a similar fate to our heliosphere. Uh, and if these two protective layers collapse, then the earth instead of being protected and instead of as it is now a radiation is just being absorbed through the poles radiation will be absorbed through the whole earth through the every land mass through every water mass uh, we will just become a radio a a, a a radiation absorbing sponge which will uh, greatly increase the effect on this planet uh, he said you could, we can experience uh, uh, extreme plate movement, continental earthquakes, uh, radiation would take out our electricity. If the electricity goes, there goes our western way of life. We're back to 1800. They said that the, sh the poles would shift, but it would be in stages. They, they would migrate. They're now migrating at least 40 miles a year. Then they would fracture into multiple North Poles, South Poles, and then finally there would be a complete shift. Uh, there would be increase in extremes in weather, increase in all manner of seismic and, and pyro disturbances, uh, radiation damage to every living every living thing and our infrastructure our uh, transistors our electricity huge winds in excess of 1100 miles an hour they also predicted extreme uh, to total loss of life we know from scripture that will not happen but we know also that the Almighty must cut the time short or else we all would die uh, and interestingly, the effects of these incoming bodies will be exacerbated over a seven-year period of time, 2012 to 2018, just the period we're in right now. Extreme winds will generate extreme tsunamis, 300 feet high, is uh, easy to imagine. Here's about a 15-foot tsunami. What would a 300-foot tsunami look like when our magnetosphere and heliosphere are gone? And our core is being heated up all the time, just 24-7. Uh, because of El Hero, the government has done studies on how far inland a 300-foot tsunami would go on our east coast. This probably began in the 1940s, said these uh, astrophysicists. And we can look at this graph showing the natural disasters from 1900 to 207. And we see an uptick starting in the later 1940s. This, is, this graph shows uh, 8 and 9. And we can see that we're, we're at by 09, we were off the charts. I, I shudder to think what uh, 2010 to 13 would show. Are we seeing extremes in the weather? Well, Australia, a sp Australian spokesman has uh, announced uh, every decade since the 1950s has been hotter. And the, the heat, uh, and w the heat um, dries out the plants, uh, promoting wildfires because the brush is dry. Here are the sheep in the outback burned in Australia. China and Russia had temperatures dipping to 50 degrees, m minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit, so cold the traffic lights stopped working and uh, the uh, liquid gas froze in the lines. The Middle East, uh, rain, snow, floods, everything. Here's a rare snowstorm in Jerusalem. In the UK, there's been record flooding. Uh, per, uh, necessitating record uh, emergency rescue efforts. Uh, I have to stop now. Uh, please pick this up for uh, part two.